Hello everyone, my name is Tom and I'm back to talk to you today about F1 Fantasy. Currently in the middle of the week between the two Grand Prix of Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, so I'll have a quick look back at what happened in Bahrain. Oh, so I'm still scarred after picking Red Bull as my constructor, but there you go. Um, and we're going to look ahead to Jeddah. Um, we'll have a quick look at the spreadsheet just to you know see how things are going, even though it's not really that relevant at this stage after just one race. Um, yeah, but we'll have a look at the current team and what's what we're doing, what I'm planning to do going forward. So yeah, as you can see, this was the, you can kind of ignore Team 2 and Team 3, by the way. Um, team 2, I'll just quickly tell you, that is uh, my Park Ferme team, so I'm not changing any of these throughout the season. Just want to see how well they get on. Um, I've kind of picked, like, the best all-round team I can I can think of to just sit and forget. And Team 3 is just, like, a budget uh, budget team, sub-15 million, just to see how many, like, budget people I can get to do really well. So the only team I'm really worried about and um, focused on and actually yeah, doing anything to do is the big boys, which is Team 1. Um, so this is the team I went into the Bahrain Grand Prix with. And despite the performance of the Red Bull in the end, I'm still really pleased with my decision making. Um, it could have been so much better, obviously, if the Red Bulls had actually made it to the end. Unfortunately, obviously, they kind of just passed out in the final few laps. Uh, literally the very last lap for Perez, which is really frustrating. Um, even if Perez had like finished the race, he would have got a nice little pocket of points there, which would have doubled up for the driver I've got him and the, and the constructor. So... It's frustrating, um, but it's also kind of a bit revealing as well that Red Bull are not necessarily going to be as reliable as they are as they were last season. Um, last season they were just rock solid reliability, and then straight off the bat, they're like they're just falling apart as in, uh, in the first race. Um, obviously, Gasly and the Alfa Tauri is using the same engine, well, not, yeah, like the same kind of engine as the Red Bulls, and the fact that that literally caught fire is it sets some alarm bells out. Um, so, some alarm bells off for uh, having Red Bull as a constructor going forward. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see um, how they cope in Saudi Arabia coming up. Um, as for the Ferraris, I mean, what can you say? Like everyone who went for, like full on Ferrari, like the clerk signs Ferrari constructor, will be giving themselves a big old pat on the back, and right, rightly so. Uh, Ferraris were outstanding, and as you can see, if I switch this over to my current team for the Saudi Arabia Grand Prix, I've already picked up Ferraris as a constructor, as I anticipated their price like increasing. Um, oh, they've actually got the percentages on now. They didn't have that on earlier. That's cool. So you can see down here, it says 71% of the way to another increase. So by the by the time that the weekend comes, that's almost certainly I'd say going to go up to another 0.4. So if you don't already have Ferrari in, it might be a good shout to get them in before the price goes up again. Um, Let's go into the team quickly here. So you can see uh, my team value is now 101.2. So I've already gained quite a lot of money because obviously you start off with 100 million. Uh, so I've gained quite a bit already just by having a good team in the first place and then making that early switch from Red Bull to Ferrari. Um, the whole sentiment thing, um, the, the price changes this season has been, from my, in my opinion, a complete and utter farce from the people that are behind the fantasy game. Um, they apparently tried to justify it by the fact that the Vettel was substituted by Hulkenberg and that caused some complications but the truth is they didn't communicate any of that to us and the the you know we've had like three days since the Grand Prix where the prices just haven't changed and I think it's, it's really bad because for engaged fantasy managers like myself and like you guys that are watching this um you know doing your research just by watching this video like you guys have kind of been penalized as well in the fact that you know people just been freely um, buying who they want with no price changes for the last couple of days so it's like all the people that don't have a clue what's going on <laughs> which there are people like that out there who just like pick whoever um, will uh, you know they've basically been rewarded by for not paying attention and I think we've been penalised but there you go uh, the, the fact of the matter is now that the um, the price changes are in fact live and um, you need to pay attention to that um, as for wildcarding, I probably would have wildcarded straight away if the price changes had come into effect immediately, but they haven't, um, so I'm probably going to be wildcarding next week. There's a two-week gap between um, the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix and the Australian Grand Prix, which is the, the next one along, and as we've already missed like half a week of price changes, I don't think it's worth it. I think a lot of the price changes that have happened with that's kind of done and dusted and there will only be like limited price changes for the next couple of days so but i think in the next the following two weeks after the Jeddah grand prix um i think it'll be a good time to wild card because you can really capitalize on making the subs you know switching out people um and making making the value up on your team i think that'd be really really useful 
Um, I think it's just too late to wildcard now. That, that's my opinion. You might have already wildcarded, and that's absolutely fine. Um, just keep keep track of the sentiment value here to keep an eye on who's going up and down. And remember, you've got up to twelve substitutes for that, so don't don't go crazy and make like twenty substitutions and lose like tons of points. <laughs> um, as to Jeddah, like I say, um, let's just come back out of this for two seconds. Oh, um, what was going on there? Don't know what's going on there. Um, let's just come out of it completely. There we go. So we got this screen back again. Um, as for as for Jeddah, they are making some some safety improvements uh, to the track. They're widening some certain parts of the track. Um, so they're trying to reduce the amount of blind corners, which is a really positive thing because obviously we don't want to see anyone getting injured or anything in any crashes. Um, but also from a fantasy point of view, um, we want that reliability when we're picking our teams. So at the moment, as you can see, my team for Saudi Arabia is like Ferrari, 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 which a lot a lot of teams will be. Um, and this is a risk. <laughs> this is a risk. Because like I say, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, where we're going this weekend, is a dangerous track. And if you put all your eggs in one basket, like I'm doing here with Ferrari, and I think a lot of people will, quite rightly so, it's a risk. If the one of the Ferraris crashes out, like the clerk has a crash, which is quite, quite possible, um... Um, then you're going to lose a big chunk of points. There's just no two ways about it. Um, but however, I think it's also a risk um, to not go for a Ferrari because they're going to be highly owned for a start. So lots of people will be getting their points if they do do well. Um, and I do think that they're generally just the best option at the moment. Uh, we've only had one race um, of information to go off so far. Um, but what they've shown us in Bahrain during the testing and also practice sessions and going into the Grand Prix itself is that the Ferrari are far and away the best team to have at the moment They're, they represent great value for money and i think i think i'll probably be going in with the ferraris this weekend unless anything drastic happens um, on the practice sessions bearing in mind the practice sessions fp2 is the one you want to be paying close attention to this weekend because it's the same time as the qualifying on the saturday so if the teams are going to be doing their quality runs in practice fp2 will be the timings that you want to kind of pay close attention to um, so if for whatever reason the Ferraris look dreadful in FP2, then ooh, some alarm bells maybe for the Ferraris, so keep keep that in mind. Pay close attention to FP1, 2 and 3 and see what the teams are saying, see what the drivers are saying closer to the time. But at the moment I'm pretty happy with this team. Everyone's like gaining value, I'm not too fussed about missing out on a couple of extra points of value. Like I say, I'll be wildcarding most likely next week. Um, when there'll still be lots of people engaged in the game and lots and lots of price changes over two weeks. So um, yeah, I'm quite happy to just wait on the wildcard. Um, just a quick word on Magnussen and Bottas. I just want to, you know, quick round of applause. What, what a couple of lads! What a couple of lads! I, I, I chose to, uh, Bottas fairly late on. He, he performed really well in one of the practice sessions, and he just looked like he was gonna. He looked fast. Alfa Romeo looked fast. I know there are some question marks over the reliability, and I know he had a really bad start to the race, but oh these wonderful human beings of magnus and bottas really hold, holding up the team um alongside the ferraris um so yeah um well done well done to these two uh we'll have a quick look at the spreadsheet this is the updated spreadsheet i've just kind of cleaned it up a bit from what i did in a couple of videos ago so i've highlighted here the points per million which at the moment you can see here in green um by the way if you're colorblind and you struggle to see any of these colors please let me know i'm absolutely rubbish i don't really know all about the ins and outs of what happens if you're colorblind so if you can't write, read this properly just let me know and i'll change it in future um but anyway um the points per million uh, as you can see are all all these numbers are massively inflated at the moment for the drivers for example magnuson is currently at 4.66 points per million which is insane um so i'm not going to pay too close attention to this until we've had at least like two or three races and then we'll start to sort of balance out and we'll get a more accurate reading as who's providing the value um, obviously last season, <clears throat> last season Norris was the best value driver at 1.7, so all these drivers are like 4, 2.6, 2.3, that, that's not going to stay like that, unless there, you know, something crazy happens. And similarly, someone like Gasly is not going to stay at zero, minus, minus 0.3, um, obviously of the DNF and everything, he finished on minus 4 points, sadly for him. Um, but yeah, so we'll keep close, not close eye on the points per million going forward, uh, it's going to be a really interesting, useful statistic um, to use going forward. Uh, I think that's pretty much it though. Um, let me know, guys, what you think uh, going into Saudi Arabia. If you think you're going to go all in on Ferrari, I think it's a sensible thing to do. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you, you know, like and want to subscribe. <laughs> and follow me on Twitter at PopPanManF1. And I'll see you for the next video sometime soon. Thanks very much, guys, for listening. Catch you soon. Bye.